Hey guys, apologies for the squeaky chair. Um, today's review is going to be, uh, or more fittingly, Knight's, tonight's review, is going to be a uh, portrait of an artist as a young man. Por I'm sorry, portrait of the artist as a young man by James Joyce. Classic. Um, and um, I'm, I'm just going to be honest with you guys, I am a bit tired, a bit not totally feeling the most motivated to do this right now, but I figured I'm just going to keep making excuses and it's never going to get done, so I'm just going to try to dig into this and try, because this is pretty recent, so you'd think I'd remember, and, um, yeah, um, interesting cover, by the way, I mean, it's, that's, uh, I'm assuming that's Joyce on the cover, um, <laughs> I don't see who else it would be, but yeah, it's, um, Portrait of an Artist as a Young Man is a early 19, I think it was published in 1916, uh, one of his earlier books uh, uses the same character as of Stephen Dedalus, which is partly art, partly art autobiographical of Joyce's own life experiences, especially um, the Catholic, you know, school and all that. That's like very drawn from his own real his own life, um, and to the extent uh, that it's fiction, I'm not entirely sure, but it, I think it's a bit of a Roman at clef or, uh, you know, in that sense where things are kind of blended with reality and, you know, heightened, obviously. So, yeah, James Joyce talks about Stephen Dedalus as a young man in Dublin, Ireland is where he's from, and he um, is trying to come into his own as an artist. Like, he's, like, interested in, you know, writing and... Uh, and his, but he comes from a very strong Catholic family, so he struggles a lot with trying to balance that, uh, you know, his love for literature and reading, and he's, uh, starts off right in the, in the beginning of the book, he's, like, showing off to his friends, like, he's, like, you know, like, <laughs> um, uh, in fact, I, I do like the intro, the very introductory thing where he talks about, like, the moo cow or something, where he's, like, very first sentence, he talks, um, struck me. Once upon a time, in a very good time it was, there was a moo cow coming down along the road, and this moo cow that was down along the road met a nice little boy named Baby Tucku. <laughs> so, yeah, it starts off kind of like a childlike account, almost like a, a bit of a fairy tale, <laughs> the, you know, the way he recounts it. And he's shown to be a very prodigious young man, um, right at the bat. And then, around his young teens, he gets sent to a Catholic type of school, and it's a very harsh just very austere, <laughs> like, life-killing, mood-killing place that he's sent. It's just very punitive, and, you know, like, you have these old, old men in, you know, robes, just like the whole, just like how you'd kind of imagine, like, Irish, Catholic, you know, type of variety of uh, religion that's just spewed on him. And he's, you know, given this very elaborate lecture on the hellfire, and, like, you know, what happens, the, you know, once you die, and if you're without in your sin, and he goes on this very long, you know, uh, I can't remember the name, it's like, you know, uh, father, one of the fathers there basically gives this lecture, and he's like, you know, it's like, almost like ornate, the way Joyce says it, it's almost poetic, but it's also sick, because it's like, it's twisting the, this young man, this poor young guy that has to deal with this, um, you know, he's making him think like, oh, every time I've sinned, every time I've lusted, and he's like, he confesses to the father, and he says like, yes, uh, father, I forgive me for I've sinned, you know, the, the classic confession and uh and he says like you know what have you done and he says like i've lusted after a woman you know it was an older woman uh which i think is like referring to joyce's own um losing his own virginity to a prostitute i believe um and like he was very conflicted with it and that kind of like uh you know it's i don't know if it's stultified but you know it de definitely added tension with his catholic with his catholic faith at the time which is already wavering and you can see why right after you read this and after he confesses it's there's another you know portion of the novel which i'm there's uh which i love is the fact that while giving this le this whole you know uh speech on hell the father is kind of looking at uh stephen dedalus as well so he's kind of giving them this condemning look and it kind of reminded me not too much on like the very fiery sermon that's given the right at the beginning of uh moby dick with Her herman melville another classic um, where they're we're about to be, basically, they're about to be, um, leave to the ocean the next day, I think, you know, I think, uh, Ishmael and, Q, uh, Q-Peg, I think, and the other characters, now I'm just reviewing Moby Dick, but no, I just wanted to get that kind of, um, 
comparison because I thought that was kind of interesting that the fact that there is like a um, this very dreadful sermon uh, and it c really cuts him like, to the core like he's like very you know like he's like thinking about all the things that he's done and he's like oh my gosh I'm so wretched you know and, like he gives like the very uh, the father gives like very dis detailed descriptions of hellfire like what is it like to burn like there's like different um, I'm not sure if he does it in like a similar way that there's like circles of hell but there's like you know the you know the, the those who who lie those who cheat those who lust you know there's different various various things like these these type of people get this type of special pun punishment um you know which of course again like another classic thing i probably think of is probably dante's inferno as well so yeah it's just um after that part very harrowing he uh this is probably the part part where he realizes that he's not like Ireland as a place is isn't like the best most conducive place to start his life as an artist so he leaves Ireland and this is very much akin to Joyce's own life where he left Ireland because of similar disagreements with like the church and being raised on environment so he goes on and um, I'm not sure where he if it's England I know Joyce himself lived in Zurich for a while Switzerland but I'm not sure exactly where Daedalus in the book moves but it definitely it ends on that note kind of like a more hopeful note so <laughs> for what it's worth and yeah um definitely um there's probably more to it that i'm definitely missing but yeah i'd, I'd recommend it um there's definitely some good allusions to you know the cost of like what kind of religious faith kind of brings like what is it ask of you is it asking like you there's this whole entire different life you could have imagined living if you just completely just dropped everything and you know became a um you know if he devoted himself to god in the way that he did like what would that have been like it's kind of that path untraveled you know or that kierkegaardian type you know should i stay should i do this should i do that you know like you'll you'll regret every option so that's what I really loved about this novel is the fact that um, he used that kind of as fuel. Like, he didn't use it as, like, well, I'm just going to kind of stay in my misery and just kind of continually self-flagellate myself as, you know, that self, that very, that very characteristic Catholic guilt, you know. I'm actually going to try to uh, make something of myself and try to, you know, in some Nietzschean type of way to have a, create my own morality. You know, I'm not sure if he says that exactly, but... Um, so yeah, he goes on writing and becomes a very prolific writer as well. And yeah, so I definitely recommend. Um, yeah, just not for the not for the faint of heart, I'd say. Um, <laughs> and yeah, it's true. There's never a dull moment, I think, in that in the whole part where he's in the convent. Um, but yeah, um, would like to start reading Finnegan's Wake next. It's a bit bigger. Um, Possibly after that, Dubliners as well, which I actually got while I was in Dublin, fiddling, fittingly enough. Um, but I've not yet to read it yet, even though I've had it on my shelf for like over three years now. <laughs> um, so yeah, um, I think that's it. Thank you for watching.